Hey guys, today it's just a quick video on energy systems, just a basic intro. You don't really need to know a lot um, just for unit one. So there's three major fuels for energy. One is carbohydrates, the other is fats, and the other is proteins. So obviously you will have heard about this in other health classes um, where your body needs fuel for energy. These are the three and these are the only three that you get from food. So we'll start off with what is energy? Energy is um, a, basically it's a molecule and it comes in the form of adenosine triphosphate. So adenosine triphosphate is one adenosine molecule with three little phosphate molecules attached to it. And so when that um, breaks up or when one of the phosphate molecules breaks off it, then it actually releases energy. And that's what you use to um, contract muscles. It's what you use to um, think with, to di digest with. Any sort of cellular process uses ATP. So um, to create the ATP, you've got about 10 seconds in your muscles, but once you've used it all up, you need to create more. So the first thing that you use is carbohydrates. So carbohydrates comes in two forms. You've got simple and complex. Simple are the straight sugars, so things like lollies and sports drinks, and um, they're the ones that you'll take if you need an immediate hit, if you've been exercising and you need to boost up your energy levels. The simple sugars are the ones that you need to use. The complex sugars are starchy foods such as pasta and potatoes. Those ones you will not usually have while um, you're doing a sporting event or exercising because they take too much to digest. They're the ones that you'll use if you're simply needing energy throughout the day or if you're carbohydrate loading. Now there's three different ways it can be stored. Carbs can be stored in the blood as glucose molecules. They're the smallest form of carbs. Um, the muscle and the liver can also store them as glycogen. So glycogen is just a stored form. But the muscles and the liver can only fit so much glycogen in. So once they're full or to capacity, then the glycogen will start to convert to fat and um, you'll store it in adipose tissue around your body. So if you eat too many carbs, basically you can put on weight. Fats um, come in two forms, saturated and unsaturated. So the saturated ones are the ones that come from animal products such as dairy and meat. The unsaturated fats come from plant products such as avocados and nuts. So the way that fats are stored in the blood are free fatty acids, so they're the very small form again. Um, the adipose tissue is basically fat that's um, stored around your body and um, it's for the little molecules inside it called triglycerides. And then um, if you have too much fat, again, it's stored as fat. Protein is found in animal products, um, so basically anything, meat, poultry, fish, eggs. So any animal food protein is found in. It's not found in every plant though, um, so you'd want to be eating beans, peas and lentils, those sort of foods, um, to get your protein. The storage though is um, fairly simple. It's um, stored as amino acids, as both in the blood and in the muscle. But again, like the other two, if you have too much protein, it will also store in excess as fats. So all three types of fuels will store as fat because that's the way the body knows how to store fuels. Um, it doesn't have any other capacity or any other form to store fuel, so it will always come down to fat. Okay, so you've got three energy systems. And they can be divided up into anaerobic, which means that there is no oxygen, and then there's aerobic, which means there is oxygen. So anaerobic, there is the ATP PC system and the anaerobic glycolysis system. So both of these are used for intense activities um, where you wouldn't have enough time for the oxygen to actually be processed. Hence, it's not actually present in um, the formulation of the ATP. The aerobic system is the one that uses the carbs, fats, and proteins to create energy and that you actually need oxygen to process them. So you, um, to process oxygen, it takes quite a bit of time. So you won't be using the aerobic system straight away. If you go for a sprint, um, 
that means that you'll be using the ATPPC system or the anaerobic glycolysis system. If you go for a jog and um, you jog for say about 20 minutes, that's when you'll be using your aerobic system because there's time to actually process that oxygen and the fuels. So this looks a little bit complex. It's, it is actually quite simple. There's three energy systems. I'll just give you a quick overview. So the ATP PC system, um, its fuel is PC, which is phosphocreatine or creatine phosphate. You may see it written PC or CP. It doesn't matter what way it's written. It's the same molecule. And its peak production time or when it creates most of its energy is within 10 seconds. So say, for example, you're saying Bolt, 10 seconds sprint, or under 10 seconds, sorry, then he will be using his ATP PC system to create the energy that he uses to exercise. The anaerobic glycolysis system, anaerobic means no oxygen, and then glycolysis means um, basically processing sugars. So you use sugar to create energy while there's no oxygen. And... The fuel there is glycogen. Glycogen, like I mentioned previously, is the stored form of glucose and its peak production time is 10 to 60 minutes. So anything, any event that might sit within a minute, that's basically um, going to use anaerobic glycolysis. So for example, a 400 meter sprint is a perfect example of this. Um, many, many years ago, Kathy Freeman one at the Olympics, she would have had a highly trained anaerobic glycolysis system. It used to be known as the lactic acid system, but not anymore. VCAR changed the study design terminology, so you cannot use the word lactic acid system. You always have to refer to it as the anaerobic glycolysis system. The aerobic system is the very last one, so they sort of all overlap each other. So as you start to exercise, the ATP PC kicks in, once it dies down, the anaerobic glycolysis kicks in, and once it dies down, aerobic, the aerobic system kicks in. So it will use um, carbohydrates first. Once it's used up all carbs, it will then turn to fats, and once it's used up the fats, then it turns to proteins. Now, that's a very extreme case. Um, you'd usually only see it in events where there's um, extreme exercise lengths. So Hawaiian triathlons, for example, or in a non-exercising situation, it would be where there's extreme starvation, the person has no carbs or fats left in their body, and they turn to proteins. The um, unfortunate thing, though, is that protein comes in the form of body tissues. So as soon as your body switches to proteins as a fuel source, it's actually eating itself to create energy, which is um, then going to cause extreme weight loss and serious issues with um, actually staying alive. So... The fuel, glycogen, fats, and proteins. Peak production time, it can go forever until you actually drop dead. So from two minutes onwards, it's in full swing. Um, say if you did a marathon over four hours, for example, most of that time, in fact, 99% of that time would be used um, with the aerobic system in place. The anaerobic systems, so the ATP and PC, the ATP, PC and the anaerobic glycolysis systems just simply cannot last because their advantages are power, uh, whereas aerobic system, its advantage is endurance. So and any aerobic um, endurance event will be using the aerobic system, but not only exercise will use it. So when you just sit there at a desk and you've got uh, your stomach muscles and your back muscles providing postural support, they have to last or they have to stay contracted for quite a long time. Um, so they'll be using the aerobic system too. There'd be no point in them um, using the ATP PC because that's explosive energy and you don't need that just to sit there. So you'd be using the aerobic system for most postural um, activities. So just in summary, you have three fuels for energy, carbs, fats and proteins. And then you have three different energy systems for different activities, and that's the ATP PC system, the anaerobic glycolysis system, and the aerobic system. Thanks for watching.